Welcome back to All Things Rangers this week. We have a lot to cover in our show. I am Mark Williams, your trusted host, and I am joined by the future interim coach of the New York Rangers, Mr. John Filkowski. I have no words. Fresh <laughs> off his victory lap, here's Mr. Anthony Larocco from the Off the Post podcast. Should have started Gorgiev. So, welcome back again, and it's time for us to talk about the Islanders part of the week. And hopefully it'll be as impassioned as the last segment we were just having. But the Islanders week started with a loss to Boston, 4-1. to one. Travis Zajac would get his first goal as a New York Islander. Then they would follow that up with Jeremy Swayman getting his first career shutout and... Not getting the Rangers a single point. Taylor Hall would score his second goal. He would match his season total <laughs> in two games with, but to, uh, against the Islanders. That's great. That's fantastic. Makes me look like an idiot for what I said about him last week. <laughs> so, then, so then the Islanders went to Philadelphia where they would win 1-0 in overtime. Eh. Is that, was that kind of like one of the most boring games you guys have watched this year? That wasn't, wasn't that great of a game. And then mm. leading to the debacle known as the 6-1 win <laughs> for the New York Islanders against the Rangers. Josh Bailey looked like Artemi Panarin last night. And Jean-Gabriel Pajot was his usual nuisance. So, Anthony, we'll start with you on what's going right and what's going wrong for the Islanders. Is um, They were... They had nine goals in their previous five games and then six goals last night. So they had three days off of play before they played the first Bruins game, so I was expecting them to be fresh and, and come out like shot out of a cannon. Um, and they kind of just kind of like the Rangers last night. They just didn't have it. They were flat. They were uninspired. Um, Trotz after the game was, was pretty verbal how disappointed he was in the team. Um, he said something something along to the extent of like too many passengers. Those weren't his exact wording, but um, essentially what he said was the same point he was trying to get across. Um, they just didn't they just didn't look good. Um, they were bad. They were, they didn't they didn't stick to their their system that they usually play. Um, Varlamov was okay. I mean, the third goal of the Hall yeah it was kind of like a, a breakaway, but it was kind of like weird how he got dragged out to the right so much and then he just kind of put a little shot between his legs that sealed the game really at that point um but they were bad flat out they were bad um next game they came out they responded they were actually were all over boston in the first period they just couldn't score they could not score and against swayman too nonetheless it was like it was kind of like oh my god like what, what does this guy come from he's peak credit him he played a really good game but the Islanders were a much better team than they were in that first game. They, they really were. Sorokin had a 9.26 save percentage that game. They just gave him no support. You know, Mayfield blew two assignments. And, and I'm a big proponent of when you get scored on with, like, you know, under a minute, especially when you're talking seconds left in a period, that really sets a tone for a game. It can carry over to the next period. And that's what happened. Mayfield leaves David Pasternak, of all people, all alone in front of the net. Pasternak scores with, like, I think it was, like, five to eight seconds left. It's like real, and then it was like one nothing. Um, and then from there, they just they just couldn't score. He, Sorokin kept them in the game. They just didn't get any opportunities. Um, and bo- credit to Boston, you know, it's the Islanders beat them five times. It's really hard to sweep a team to beat, literally win every single game during the regular season against a team. So I was going into this back-to-back matchup with them. I was honestly expecting Boston to take game, um, just because how difficult it is to win every single game against them. Uh, and they're also a good team, you know, so credit to Boston. They got the job done. Um, thankfully, the Islanders went into Philly and they got the two points. Uh, however, their goal scoring struggle stayed with them. Um, fortunately, Nicoletti got a bounce off a, off a flyer stick in overtime that gave him the win. But that game was all Ilya Sorokin in the first period. Uh, and in the second period, he was strong too. The third period, they got to their game and they were getting most of the opportunities. And it was Elliott who was playing really well. But that game, really, that, that was all Ely Sorokin. If not for him, that game's probably over in the first period. Uh, so they they should have, I don't know what they did after the game, you know, cr- protocols of the lot to go out, but he deserved this nice steak after that game. Um, 
And then you have the Ranger game. You know, we kind of discussed a little bit in the prior segment, but the Islanders were a hungry team. They looked like a team ready to play playoff hockey. Uh, they got on the Rangers early. Uh, they did everything they usually do. They Every line came out in a wave and played the same way. Um, and eventually they got the first goal, and then the kind of dam broke uh, after that first goal. But, you know, you know, this is the type of game that the Islanders needed to play to get back on their feet in terms of their goal scoring. You know, because like Mark mentioned, they were having trouble scoring goals. So hopefully this springs board, springboards them into their crucial three-game matchup with Washington. Um, this is a good decided division, really. Three games against the Capitals. You know, they're tied right now in points. Whoever wins, let's say, two of these three games or three of three, forget about it. At that point, that team that does that is going to win the division most likely. But... This is going to decide the division here, you know. So the Islanders want to win their first division since 87, 88. Uh, I would say they need to take at least two or three of the Capitals here. So uh, it's going to be exciting hockey. I think, uh, you know, both teams obviously are fighting for that top spot. The last two times they played, the Islanders blew them out and then won a one nothing game, you know, beat them both styles of hockey. So we'll see how Washington responds for this three-game set, but I'm looking forward to it. And I'm also curious to see which goalie Trotz gives, um, you know, the majority of these starts to. If he's going to give Verlamov two of the three, if he's going to give Sorokin three, three of the three, sorry, two of the three. The only thing we do know is not the same guys getting all three, but I am curious to see how he splits it up. John? Yeah, um, they. It, it, it's like a tale of two worlds with them. It, it, I, and it's funny, I thought that the, the Palmieri Zajac trade would actually improve them, and Kind of seems like they're just in the same position. They're kind of like the same team they were before the trade. Um, they just they have a guy that you know can fill in for Lee's minutes. Um, he's been decent with them so far. I, I don't want to say he's been great. Uh, I would say he's been good. Um, Saint Jack has been good for them, but it, they just seem like they're in the same position. They do, it doesn't seem like the major improvement that everybody expected following that trade has happened and. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, they they looked, they went into that series with Boston. I figured, you know what, they're probably going to get at least two out of the four points in this, and you know, hopefully, they keep Boston to to two points or less in those two games. And it just did not happen. Um, they didn't play well in that first game, like Anthony said. Um, the second game, they played better. But I mean, where did Swayman come from? Because I, I don't think anybody had him on their radar before this season started outside of the Boston Bruins organization. So nobody knew who the hell that guy was. But, um, I mean, the game against uh, Philadelphia, Anthony was right. I watched all that game from start to finish. I watched all these games, actually. I've been guilty in the past of not being able to watch full games because I'm trying to go back and forth between the Rangers and the Islanders. But I watched all these games, and I'll tell you right now, Ilya Sorokin's best game of the year was against Philly. Absolutely the best game of the year. Um, he held them in there for the first half of that game, especially that first period, because if it wasn't for him, that's I counted probably about five goals that Philly could have scored in that first period. Mm -hmm. And Ilya Sorokin was equal to the task. And, yeah, the state dinner thing is probably accurate. <laughs> he bailed them out of that game early on. So uh, Sorokin was really good in that game. Uh, Brian Elliott was also very good in that game. Uh, combined with the fact that the Islanders just sometimes seem to have trouble scoring goals. Um, but I'll tell you right now, uh, like I said, if, if, it, if the Islanders do not make the conference finals equivalent this year or better, and it comes and people look at the fact that Lou had the chance to pull the trade on Hall and Boston does well and goes far, Lou might take some heat for that because it's starting to look like Boston is the more improved team of the two. And they made the smaller move, if you ask me. So, I kind of look at this week and just kind of wonder, will the real New York Islanders please stand up? They have really had a tough time scoring goals, and I think that this is a team that wins the center matchup every single game um, because they're going to be able to throw Sezikis, Peugeot, Nelson, and Barzell at you. Yeah, I almost forgot Matthew Barzell. But uh, right now he's slumping. They really do miss Anders Lee. Um, but you know what? The Ranger game probably could have gotten them back on track. So we'll have to see how this plays out. It could be very much that simple. 
that they just got back on track now because they beat the Rangers and they got six goals and Josh Bailey put a couple in the net and Bill Villiers had one. Uh, that was that puck deflected off a skate right to him. I mean, yeah, that he was licking his chops probably when that puck was coming right at him. Um, sometimes that's all it takes. You just get a you just get a puck to go in the net, and then you can start scoring again. Got to see how this translates. If the Capitals come out and wall with them, it's funny because the last couple weeks the theme for the Islanders has been if you beat us at your game, we'll beat you at your game. And their opponents then also have the we're going to beat you at your game too, and we're also going to play ours. It happened against Philly. It happens um, against the Capitals. Um, now, I'm sorry, not Philly. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, they said, we're playing our game, and then the second game they won 2-1. to one. So, um, And then the Islanders turned it right back to the Capitals. We'll see where it goes from here. Um, it's... Uh, I th- they're they're in a gold. They're in the driver's seat. Uh, just go get the division, uh, Anthony. Yeah. So you know, I think the key coming up with the Capitals is, you know, they have, get on them early. It seems like when the Islanders score first, chances are they're going to win the game. Like the game is against Boston. Obviously, they did not score first or at all. They lost. Um, the game against Philly was a zero-zero game. I mean, they should have lost, but thankfully they won in overtime. And then the Rangers, they score first, and then they went on to win the game pretty easily. So I think with Washington, they need to get on the board early, um, you know, and then get a second one and then kind of go from there. But, you know, it's 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 so much easier to play the game when you have a lead, especially when you want to play Barry Trotz's style of hockey. Because when you're behind, it's really hard to play that style of hockey because you're not you're not in a position to really sit back and wait for the other team to make to make a mistake to pounce. At that point, you, you need to create the offense to score. So um, for the Islanders to be successful, they really need to score first here against the Capitals these next couple of games. Um, you know, look, if they get if they say they win the first two, um, then all the pressure's on Washington for the third. So at that point, you know, now you're talking to Allen's four points up on them for the division lead. And, you know, they could they could honestly really seal the division. If they if they take two or three for the Capitals, or even three or three, they're likely going to win the division here. So... They just need to play Islander hockey and, you know, hope that they, they, they this six-goal outburst against the Rangers has made the dam burst here and they can start filling the net a little bit more. Um, you know, they have the talent to score. I mean, they have so many guys with, you know, decent amount of goals, Nelson and Pajot. So, you know, they just need to keep keep playing their Islander hockey, keep rolling their centers because, Mark, as you said, it's really hard for a team to match up against them down the middle. And now that Zajac's there, too, that gives them a fifth capable NHL center. So... They're very deep there. They, they need to use that to their ability, and hopefully that will take them to division title. But, you know, we'll see. Um, and lastly, the goaltending. You know, it's been good. I think Sorokin's been better of late. So um, as long as, you know, he can continue to play well and supplement Varlamov, they, they really got a good opportunity here. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it kind of – Anthony kind of really summed it up. It, it's – they're they're in a good position right now. Uh, I personally thought they would be more improved. Um, I would definitely keep an eye on Boston because it seems like they're poised to start move themselves. Um, Mark, your Pittsburgh prediction still has some, uh, still has a little bit of a of a chance to it. So they're they're only like what two points back now, three points back, I think after last night. Or one point back. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So they're one point back. Oh, man. If Pittsburgh somehow wins that division. And then you have Washington and the Islanders in a first round series. That would be interesting. But, um, I mean, the goaltending for them is playing well. Uh, the system works. Obviously, we know that. Uh, the defense has been good. Pelican Pollock have been good. Uh, Mayfield's even been good for them. Uh, Letty has played better this year than he has in the last two, I would say. Um, it, you know what? They, they have scoring. It's funny because you look at it, the lineup up front and it's balanced. And they have guys with like, you know, obviously double digit goal totals and stuff. But it just seems like from a game to game aspect, on a night to night basis, they just don't 
get that goal scoring consistently. So, I mean, you wonder if something has to give somewhere, whether it's the players or whether it's the system. I don't know, but I mean, they need to play with that lead. Otherwise, they're not the same team. If they're down in a game, that's a completely different story. Especially if they're down by two, they're not in a good position. So, if they don't get the lead and come playoff time, it's going to be harder to get the lead on teams. Well, uh, we'll see what happens with that. Well, the one thing I said all along, and I've said this before, the Islanders are the worst team to play against with a two-goal lead. And then... Never mind a three-goal lead. When they got the third one, the game was over last night. Uh, two teams came back on them when they've gotten a two-goal lead at, at home. Pittsburgh and this is just at home. Pittsburgh and uh, the Rangers, and only the Capitals on the road when they had a two-goal lead. And that was when the Capitals they had a three-goal lead, and the Capitals took it to them in that one game. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, and that was it was horrible. So. They're, they're that's what they are. They're the best defensive team in the league. They're gonna just get on top and hold you down. So that's that's what they're gonna do. So what do you think about what's going on with the Islanders? Uh, is their lack of offense something that's alarming? And um, it, is there no reason for concern? I mean, is the offense just gonna come because their defense is always so good? Who is the better goaltender right now for them, Semyon Volamov or Ilya Sorokin? We'd like to hear what you think about that. And also, we're going to be answering that question in the Bar Talk segment. Did you like that video? Of course you did. So why not check out some more of our content? You can check the playlist right here or right here. Hmm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.